goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. What's up, guys? Welcome to The Partners, a show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I'm your boy, Tiz, one-third of The Partners. And as always, I am with... The other third of The Partners, the friendly neighborhood Padawan here, along with Dramatic Pause. You know it's facing the place, man. Robble, robble. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that was. Robble, robble. What the fuck is robble, robble? Somebody watch Rick and Morty. What the hell? Rattle, robble. robble. He said that yeah, shit like that shit was like a, a everyday catchphrase. Rattle, robble. Yo, that, that, robble, that, that, that's the that's a like cartoon a hamburger. character. That's a that's a cartoon <laughs> character from um from Cartoon Network <laughs> named what is it? It's called oh, Chow. But I don't know. I seen a, a cartoon guy to say that same <laughs> rattle rattle. That's all he was speaking to. Rattle rattle. <laughs> <laughs> what in the hell? Um, well, that happened. We are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, so we back. We finally back. Um, thank y'all for bearing with us last week. Um, thank y'all for accepting our live streams and stuff as a, a an exception. Um. But this is the real episode 37. It's the real deal, holy field. Ain't no other who keep any trio. All upside your head, like Silent Hill. Oh yeah, we ill. I'ma cut that. That was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, it was really wiggity whack. Yes, it was. Um, <laughs> um but yeah, man, how y'all doing? That's how face is doing, and um, I'm I'm right. cool. <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, like I said, this is episode thirty-seven, so we here, we chilling, and um, let's get right off into the crazy shit. Uh, I think it's time since it's been a week. Um, a lot's been going on in the world. Yeah. So, Pat, I think it's time. It is time. It is time for. Because I feel good. Everybody else feel good. You know what I'm saying? You know what I like? Fuckery. So it's time for the good and fuckery, y'all. Good and fuckery. Good and fuckery. Good and fuckery. Good, 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 good. Every time I say good and fuckery, my arms good go up like this. Y'all can't see it. Good because I'll be like in this. Good and fuckery. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> good and fuckery. So yeah, I have accumulated a lot on the good and fuckery list this week, but so we we we're gonna get right into it. Um, first off, if, by the time y'all hear this, as we are recording, this is now the locks versus the dip set versus. I said that all wrong, but the locks versus dip set versus pretty much. Because I said the dip set, but either way, either way, either way. It's going on right now. Whatever. I'm kindly uh, monitoring it, it and whatnot. Ah, can't talk right now. Can't talk at all. Where's my coat? Not the soda. The soda. What you say? The soda. I needed to drink because I soda. couldn't really talk right now. <laughs> but anyway, um, right into the list. So, um. There's a Malcolm X series that's about to be coming out, and it's produced Yo, by Yasa. Dog. Yeah, I'm glad he said it because I probably would have butchered her name. But I Eliasa talked about it on the so positive bad. black news uh, on the fake episode 37. On the fake one, oh well, we bring it back up. I just wanted to inform people it's happening. It's a real thing, y'all. It's going I on. By any chance you got the channel? That was what I didn't have. Mm-hmm. You said, "How you gonna <laughs> say, uh, oh, Humble J. Hibbert? I'm gonna say, yeah, huh? The hell? <laughs> See, that's some nigga shit there. It is. Nigga just say, it, just say, yeah. Don't be treating me like I'm a wife, nigga. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I, I would never disrespect you like that, man. No. 
<laughs> no, and you know that was just, the, mm -hmm. that that was the husband. Uh -huh. I, I would never disrespect. Uh huh. Mm hmm. My bad. What this I is so much was, stuff. <clears throat> do you have the channel? Did you were you able to find the channel that is coming out on? No, I wasn't. I ain't. I see it. See so me far, neither. I don't think. Because he's just saying that it's um. It comes from what Sony Pictures Television TriStar Division or whatever, but I don't think they actually figured out where they're gonna actually put it on it yet. From what I've seen so far, but Ooh. yeah, once once we find out, you know, oh, we're gonna let y'all know. Mm -hmm. I'm right. supposed to focus on his young life, so that should be dope. Oh yeah, oh yeah, mm -hmm. Michael Little, um, Malcolm Little's Little's, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's the name. You, you feeling okay like that? Mm, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I, I had to think face, about it. Face, you not hearing this shit? Yeah, it's I'm just, just, it's just it. nigga, you I'm, here? I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. This is going to be funny later on, anyway. All right, next fucker. <laughs> well, next good, I should say. Yo, is this movie that's out? Um... It's called Crazy Samurai, and it has, like, the longest fight sequence. It's, like, uh, 77 minutes and a one-take action film sequence or whatever. I am going to find it, but it's, like, called Crazy Samurai 400 the whole versus 1. It's seven minutes, mm. and there's a fight scene. So the movie is one – the whole movie is one take. Like, it's mm. a one-shot movie. Mm-mm. Yeah, they say the um one take action film sequence. That's how they said it, pretty much. And it was like the whole thing is seventy seven minutes. Or you mean like during the, whole, the movie? The during the movie, fight, there's an action sequence. During the movie, there's a seventy seven minute long action sequence. So how long fight. is the movie? That's why I need to find out. But <laughs> it's in the process. Um, the uh, what is it? Art streamer? Huh? Blah, 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 blah. Skip all that. All that. Um, the highlight, yeah, it just says the highlight of the film is seven minute, is a seven minute action long sequence. So it didn't really tell me exactly how long the movie is, pretty much. Um, director Yuji Shumamura. Yeah, this is going to be fun trying to say these names, man. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> he said uh, he's crafted an epic. Uh, epic achievement in action choreography. Um, and uh, this is Sakaguchi is the guy who plays Maya Moto. Sakaguchi? Yeah, that's the name of the guy. He plays the legendary swordsman named Maya Moto Musashi in 1584 to 1645. Whatever. A warrior undefeated in at least 60 documented duels pretty much. So that's the whole gist of the movie. Pretty much, if y'all find out about it, um, go ahead and tag the link and put it in the comments so I can find out where it is. But it is a 77-minute uh, sword fight scene. And, and I want to see it. <laughs> I, I want to see it. I've seen the trailers and I've seen like some of the back behind the scenes of how, it, how they're going to do it or whatever. But yeah, I want to see how they pull it off. I want to see all of the fuck ups in that scene because there's got to be some some bloopers that just had to make it in just because they was like, "Well, we can't cut." <laughs> it's gonna be in the behind the scenes, and there's gonna be two guys and one with his arm cut off laughing in the background. <laughs> yeah, this would happen like uh, earlier. <laughs> Good take, <laughs> Earl. <laughs> you go back. <laughs> Good take, Earl. That make me laugh. Mm -mm. I don't know who Earl is. <laughs> <laughs> so Earl everywhere, man. It is. Yeah. And even in the midst of world Earl. of the Miyamoto's. It's Miyamoto, that's Sagaguchi. And you there's know, Earl. There's you. <laughs> he hang right with them. That, that's that's right cool. there. Shabamoto <laughs> and Earl. He don't got no last name. Nope, just Earl. He got a name tag on some overalls, but nobody knows where he works. You don't know if he's an electrician or mechanic or what. He's just Earl. You call that nigga Earl. I don't outside. know what face over there whispering. He over there. I got my deep, 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 deep. 
Nah, I said they call that nigga E Boogie. Yeah, you gotta put your mouth near the mic like that. Whatever you doing right there, just keep doing that. I don't know what you were saying. I thought you was on there making a beat. I was about to start jamming. <laughs> Yeah, got me ready to throw a fucking. Let me shut up. That's gonna come off off real crazy, even though I don't mean it that way. (laughs) It's gonna be quiet. Oh, this is gonna be a goofy night. (laughs) Oh man, I'm telling you, man. Okay, let me just come clean with y'all out there, Pod Squad. I am exhausted. I am burnt out. I woke up right before this show. I went to sleep for an hour and then woke up right again. And then I'm still here and I'm about to fall asleep again. But I'm making it. I just want y'all to know that though. So when I seem a little goofy, a little loopy, a little off, it's because I am. I'm crazy as hell right now. Yes, they deserve to die. And I hope they burn in hell. <laughs> Shit. I, I knew it. I knew it. As soon as you cut. Your head up to the side and make that face. <laughs> but yes, it man. just popped in my head, man. I, I think you were telepath. Bruh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of them, bro. It's one of them, bro. Mm-hmm. We make it by God, by the grace of God. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you seen them? You seen them, uh, Andrew? <laughs> it's not just called those infomercials. It's like a uh, fast 38. And they got the black dude screaming, selling like um, blessed, like handkerchiefs or something. Am I to grease some gold? Come on, get your personal prayer package and your prayer cloth. The blood of Jesus prayer cloth. You can put it in your Bible. You can put it in your mantle. You can put it wherever. That's the Curtis Thomas. That's the dude we used to watch at uh, at uh, Juju Crib. Yeah. 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 I at the end shit. of the day. Nigga come back home from the pool. Nigga be watching fucking Curtis <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> Cause God, y'all look up Curtis Thomas. He was one of the. I don't know if he still come on, but that was one of the funniest shows on TV, boy. That that man be yelling for no reason with him big suits. Oh uh, yo, no TV yeah. pastors be acting up, man. And yeah, he had that big OJ Simpson head. <laughs> <laughs> my, my my parents they watch um there's this one pastor they watch right and in the watch, morning they be watching Kearney and his voice is it is is he the dude that be sounding like a robot on Windows Boy and them guys be out there exposed and stuff <laughs> Nigga, like, what? like Hoochies and hoes. No, that sounds like Mr. from Color Purple Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> no what? man, it's, oh, wow. I don't know. Man, my brother, and my sister would tell me though, but this is past they would no. listen to. And I swear to God, I swear, I thought he'd be cousin or something because he like these girls out there, they out there. <laughs> it sounded like he, he got one of those things, like he got a hole in the neck, like he got one of those things he put up to his neck. <laughs> he, got a, he got a uh sound a like, voice, like a voice box for like when yeah. you got a, a stoma or something. Yeah. He sound like he got the synth- he got the synthesizer thing on his mouth, whatever. <laughs> synthesizer. Nigga ain't got no goddamn vocoder on his neck. <laughs> he got like Teddy Riley. If you take your love away from me, <laughs> hell no, nigga. Nigga girls out there, I'm being done. Jezebels in the street. <laughs> I don't know what dude you talk about, but that pastor sounds hilarious. That sounds like yeah, an, yeah. A, a great sermon to just listen to and laugh at. Yeah, let's go pass and knees. She is for the streets. You <laughs> <laughs> stupid as hell, bro. That's what what he was, <laughs> Yo. Oh man. My brother, my brother gonna tell me who that is. My brother and my sister, I'll I'll be back with y'all with Pod Squad, but some of y'all probably already know. But let me get back to the good <laughs> I forgot all about we was in the middle of a segment, dude. I I, I forgot we had started. Just roll with it. I was over here just talking. Just all roll right. with it. Roll with it. Roll with it. Um, yeah. What was it? Uh, if y'all remember from the last good and fuckery, I, I told y'all to stop eating, you know, 
Doritos and stuff for the Frito Lay workers that's striking. So they uh as my son yeah. got a care package in the mail from his grandmother <laughs> with goddamn Doritos and Funyuns <laughs> and like everything Frito Lay make, spicy Cheetos, <laughs> just all kinds of shit. Well, um, it's cool to do it now because they come to agreement. They're going to have higher wages pretty much. And um, Good, son. You eat in solidarity with the workers. Yeah, yeah. They say uh, <laughs> it gives all union members a 4% pay raise over two years and guarantees workers at least one day off each week. Um, I, I still think that's kind of eh, on the deal, but yeah, <clears throat> more than 500 of the 850 employees represented by the union went on strike July 5th, you know, saying it was a toxic environment. And, uh, and you know, they gave the, the normal corporate PR explanation. You know, we feel very strongly that if we can reset the facility, we will address a lot of the staffing and overtime issues. Um, the uh, what is his name Fisher said I don't know. it they did it but it, it yeah they they're back in there um <clears throat> your face is throwing me off <laughs> they're back in there because I don't know what the hell you trying to say you just like uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah because I was about to finish the rest of his statement but it just sounds like a regular <laughs> corporate PR statement and <laughs> Alan. <laughs> Is the more I read it, <laughs> I don't even care about the statement. <laughs> I don't, I don't knock the microphone the down. I'm just happy but... they got something. Oh my god! But yeah, but uh, yeah, each Frito Lay now they they got a pay raise pretty much. Next up, um, Michael B. Jordan is Superman still. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, was he Superman in the first place? So it's been this, um, like in the comic book, social media world or whatever, to try to promote stuff. You know, you have celebrities time and time post something up and then they'll have a big spectacle about it within the comic book media outlets or whatever. So um, the, the idea was rejected a couple of times or whatever, but there's this version of Superman where in this universe... He's black and he becomes president and his name is like Val Zod or whatever. So he's like, I think the son of General Zod in that universe or whatever. And Michael B. Jordan wants to play him. So he's actually producing it himself. He probably got some people backing him up, but it's supposed to go for um, be on HBO Max. Oh, what'd you say, Face? To be turned back in you said what? Who's back? Could be Tyler Perry. Oh, well, that could be. Hey, you got That's the big, possible. big studio for it or whatever. Yeah, but the, the resources. My, I'm. I'll say. I, I'm kind of conflicted because I'm not really for the. All right, let's have a black version of every white superhero, or whatever. I, I'm really for the. Hey, this just make new superheroes that just happen to be black you know instead of like you know it's <clears throat> i think since um since since the miles morales or whatever i've been seeing an uprise of like all right this is the black version of iron man this is the black version of batman this is the black version of superman they've been having a bunch of black versions of superman pretty much but um and i'm like hey why don't we just make new black characters? Pretty much. But I am for black people producing their own stuff. So if he wants to be Superman, he, and I, I am for like, hey, not waiting for Hollywood to do stuff for you or whatever, go ahead and do it. You want to be Superman? Because if I wanted to be Superman and I had the, <laughs> the, the, the production team to do it, guess what I'm doing? So I'm all for it. So he, um, so they redoing the whole story of Superman. No, it's um, in comic books from time to time or whatever, 
they they just have writers. They'll just write their own flip on a on a character. So that's what this that's is. The, it's like the Joker movie. It's like it ain't necessarily part of no universe or nothing. It's just yeah. This person yeah, wanted like, to do a movie with Superman. And he wanted <clears throat> to put Michael B. Jordan as a Superman. Yeah, it's it's really is it's really was a comic book series. I believe it was called Earth Two. Um, I have to go back to it where Val's are because I'm not really a DC head, mm -hmm. but DC has a whole bunch of different universes and each universe is a flip of the same thing pretty much in one universe instead of batman um bruce wayne being batman his father ends up being batman or whatever um and and instead of uh kal-el clark kent comes to earth this dude val zai comes to earth and he's actually black and he's actually ends up being powerful and you know black absorbed sun anyway and that's the basis of superman's powers and all that stuff so that um valzad has always been a character um like in i would say probably in the past maybe 10 15 years or whatever um but michael b jordan he found out about the character he wanted to do a movie about it and he picked it up pretty much so pretty <clears throat> dope. Yeah. all right i'll give it a shot I mean, hey, this is like, I'll say, I feel like Michael B. Jordan isn't a bad actor. I think he just sometimes be taking any damn role. Sometimes. He's and also I, he's also very much the same person in every role. Like, he's not very good yeah. at switching up. Because, like, he's just him in every role. So That is true. Man. You can kind of start, like, his character start to bleed <clears throat> into each other. Like, nigga, are you Killmonger right now? Are you Superman? Are you who are you? <laughs> you, 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 Johnny Storm. Who are you? He gotta be. Well, I, I think if he's gonna be this Superman, because this Superman is the president, so he gotta have some type of change. He can't be Killmonger. You know what I'm saying? And be Obama. <laughs> Obama man. That's basically it. You know what Obama I'm saying? Obama man. <laughs> That's pretty much Say it. Say more. What you mean? He can't be Killmonger and Obama man. You mean like? Because he can't black, be evil and being good. Black president Superman is basically Obama. That's pretty much it. That's 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 what I see when I uh, like read like. This part. Power. You said what now, Faith? That nigga Obama got special power. No, no. <laughs> I just feel like they they use the visage of Obama to like write parts of Balzad's character, pretty much since he becomes oh. a black super black president pretty much or whatever so that's that's all i feel i don't feel like it's that it, um anything more than that pretty much but yeah uh i'm i'm curious so i want to see how this turns out pretty much. i'll give it a shot yeah that's it so uh next TV. you said what now please i take it out when they come on the tv yeah, it's supposed to be on HBO Max. That's what it's supposed to be. We'll see when it comes out, though, because they just in talks about it right now. So. so next on the list, I don't know if anybody, I, I, it's been going around, but uh, the TikTok Black Dancer strike is still going on, and oh, it has come. Thing. Yes, it is a thing, and it is that's coming out with some hilarious outcomes because the white dance. <laughs> Don't know what to do. <laughs> so yeah, whenever you have time, if you're bored, check it out. You know, just YouTube it. Hey, black black uh dance or TikTok strike or whatever, and you're gonna find some hilarious outcomes out there. Like they got <laughs> I seen this video of some white dancers. They trying to do a dance for um Meg the Stallion's thought um shit song, right? And that's pretty much it like every time like Meg the Stallion come out with a song the black TikTokers make a dance then somebody white cops it then it becomes big all over media pretty much all right so <laughs> I seen one and literally when when Meg says hands on my knees the girl <laughs> the white girls throw their hands up and go like this and I'm like that's that doesn't go with it at all. Like each time, like as soon as she says hands on my, 
like the dance does not go <clears throat> with it. <laughs> and every time that I seen like what you want like them to a, do when they when she said hands on the knees, I know you. I want the them knees. to follow the direction. Like if you're gonna make yeah. a dance for a song, had insensitive they, about them knees, guys. You better put them hands on them knees. Damn it, you know he wants. Yeah, that's knees disrespectful to, to Megan's knees. Shouts out to Megan's knees. I say this on every episode. I don't understand, but I mean that. Come on, it's man. Coming a weird thing. It is. Not really, <laughs> but anyway. That. Knees does a lot of work, man. You don't disrespect somebody needs to do that much work. Or maybe you do in certain circumstances. I can't talk tonight for nothing. Anyway, next on the good <laughs> It's been a struggle. It's been a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Long week. Uh, next on this, Lizzo is tired of all of y'all saying that she kills someone while crowd surfing. Who said yeah. that? Uh, I don't know, man, but evidently they've been hitting her up on her um, Twitter and everything, say <laughs> this rumor. I never heard. I never heard of that. So that, yeah. rumor, that rumor must have been local to her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It must have been just her but, people talking about it. I ain't know about that one. Well, you know, when you were a celebrity and you got social media, it's a cloud community around your social media or whatever of trolls and stuff just trying to figure out a way to get the time in the in the light or whatever so a lot of times if you was i'm what i'm thinking if you're a celebrity and you're really into social media you not seeing the world outside of what your social media is saying pretty much especially if you're a big celebrity a lot of times they're like isolated from the world just because maybe you know bad pr at the time or just paparazzi in general or whatever so but I thought it was hilarious. So I brought it up on the good and fuckery. <laughs> That's real. Well, but I Lizzo. I um, I would hope not. That, that's very disturbing. Um, I would think you would have heard about it if that was something real, though, that she really killed somebody by jumping on them. <laughs> I thought I was seeing it on a, multiple media or TMZ at least, but they yeah, the settlement. The visual, the like, the mental picture of that is uh, pretty fucking wild, yo. <laughs> like yeah! a WWE fight, like uh, <laughs> like a cartoon where you like the Jimmy Snuffer and fly. <laughs> Bust through the floor like Kool Aid. Oh yeah! Bodyguards gotta, you know, they gotta take that back, bro. That's what they need to do. The bodyguard need a bodyguard. <clears throat> In that situation, probably. And if she throw her big body, God. Hope the bodyguard God is body. <laughs> and after she hit you with that body. God. Body, 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 body. Gonna be some body bags. <laughs> <laughs> Zip them up, as Keisha would say. Yeah. Let me shut up. Oh man! All yeah, right, so some of that out. Don't worry. We'll get, we'll get back to the <laughs> being PC somehow. <laughs> I said, get it. Yeah! That's definitely going No, that's probably going to end up in there because I'd be forgetting to edit shit like that out. Too much, too much. All right. Um, good, some good. Um, Obama is now a minority owner of NBA's Africa business. Cool. Uh, the NBA launched its Africa entity in May and it values the business as a nearly $1 billion venture. Um, NBA Africa oversees the BAL, which is held in its inaugural season last May. And the investors include, oh, I'm going to butcher this name, 
Dikembe Mutombo. Okay, I might have had Grant Hill and yeah, yeah, Junior Bridgman. Okay, I, I, ain't, I ain't noticed it was Mutombo until I saw Mutombo at the end. I was like, oh, no, 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 <clears throat> no, no, no. But that's no, cool. no, that's no. Cool. <laughs> um, the league said Obama would use his stake in the NBA <laughs> Africa to fund the Obama Foundation youth and leadership programs across Africa. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> this nigga is weak in the background. <laughs> I was like, what the hell did that sound? <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. no. You seen that guy go commercial, that nigga be smacking the letter down. Like, yeah. Oh, shit. No, no, no. That nigga just take off running oh, that Bigfoot. <laughs> Yo, Bigfoot no, people no, are no. That nigga got like a size 20 foot. That should be hilarious, yo. Cause it just look like they running with olive oil feet. With olive oil? They got yeah, running with Ronald with the McDonald feet. Feet look like French baguettes. <laughs> oh shit! Mm-mm. Walking with skis all the time. Ski, <laughs> ski, ski. I wonder what the hell Manute Bowl doing. Uh, somewhere doing some type of uh, philanthropy work, and his son plays in the NBA now. Cool. Yeah, Manu, do you think? Yeah, yeah. His son, his son name is Bo Bo. <laughs> oh yeah, Bo Bo. Come here, Bo Bo. That makes sense. Bo Bo, make your feet feel fine. Bo Bo, they cost a dollar nine and nine. You know, I'm. I don't know what's more impressive that the sons in the NBA, or you just that you already knew what was Manute Bowl doing at this time. So <laughs> I would have never really. I would know. I would have to Google. <laughs> Man, I, you know, I'm in the sports, bro. That's my shit. So sports, uh, I'm. I be. I be trying to stay up on it. Even if I don't catch the games, I try to stay at least. In the general, know what's going on in most sports because I, I don't know, I'm just addicted. Like, yeah. So what's going on in the world of cricket right now? That that I don't know. Yeah, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> we talking American Not- sports. I got somewhat of a general idea, but uh, you start getting into cricket, uh, you lost me. I know, I, I know what's going on in the Olympics right now, but I do want to watch some of them cricket games. They um, said I thought I would try. Because I will say cricket is fun as hell to watch. Like I like it. I, I prefer to watch cricket than uh baseball if I got a pick. Actually. I wouldn't want to watch nail one of the motherfuckers. I can respect it. Shit. Let me watch track and field or boxing in the Olympics. I got you. But you know what I really like in the I Olympics? Maybe, I like that. I, I like synchronized swimming in the Olympics as well. I did not see that. Because you got to be, because you got to be on point, man. You got to be on point with each other because you can't see each other. You're in the water. You feel like the water, the waves of the water may make the other person do something different at a different time. So you got to be that much, that on point. You feel me? Y'all got to be that in sync. Y'all chemistry got to be there for shit. Even that's true teamwork, yo. That's real. True. True. Basketball, the other um, team sports, you feel me? Like, that's one thing. You got another person working against you, but you got a natural element working against you. Water, <laughs> nigga. You can't beat water. <laughs> you can't beat water. <laughs> you can't beat water. That's water. That's nigga, what um that shit Bruce Lee when you said. Touch it. Bruce Lee said you got to be like water. Yeah, right. Be Bruce, Lee said, <laughs> Bruce Lee also told you brick don't hit back. Bruce Lee was real. Hurting. Bruce Lee was real good at pointing out the obvious shit. Yeah, yeah. Of course, brick don't hit back, Bruce. We know Bruce. Of course not. It will hurt him. No, all Bruce. Bruce. Duh, Bruce. No, brick no, no, back. no, duh, Bruce. How dumb were the people you teaching, Bruce, that you felt that you had to tell them <clears> brick don't hit back? You thought they were sitting around waiting on the brick to respond with a jab or two? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like, well, we, well, we like what the met, hell was we you? We all met people that dumb. Like, we think about these statements. Dumb. Like, how dumb were the people that you were teaching, Bruce? You, you, so they that dumb that you got to tell them that the brick don't hit back, but you teaching them a deadly oh. form of martial arts, nigga. 
Are you sure you want these dumb people walking around knowing how to kill people with a two inch foot? Maybe I don't they know if they're Maybe, maybe, maybe they're one of those people that life skills. they only good at one thing. Oh, very <laughs> good. But brick, no hit back. No shit. I was hitting the brick to show my strength, I thought. I, I, I didn't think that I was supposed to be thinking that it was going to be a sparring match real quick. The fuck? Oh. That what is, if the oh, brick, brick it, it'd be <laughs> some dumb shit that people be telling. Be saying back in the day, yo. I'd be oh, thinking they drop a whistle, but they really just saying some shit that's like dead ass obvious. Like, yes, nigga, we know. If the brick do hit back, we all need to carry our ass home and go to sleep because go lay down because something well, wrong. This is the trip shit though. Well, if somebody told him that first, like, oh, Bruce, brick don't hit back. And then he threw a brick and be like, yeah, well, brick do hit back though. <laughs> <laughs> Breaks, I, I know what happened with Burger. I was just listening. Craig from Friday said uh brick hit back. Oh, my face is so goofy when I laugh. I know what happened to Burger. The Cubsy for Dickin' Burger. <laughs> oh, man. Did we ever tell oh, that man. story on here? What? The Tecumseh story. Oh. I don't think we ever. Okay. I think y'all oh, told me, but I don't think y'all ain't never said it up here. <laughs> so if we have never told y'all, Pod Squad. There's a lot of inside jokes that we have from just throughout the years. Uh, some between Face and Pat, some between me and Pat, some between uh, me and Face, some between, like, it, it's just, you know, we all got our own little, like, weird, little quirky little inside jokes that have happened because we have just been on so many damn adventures. So, oh, man, back, you'll hear sometime we'll be in talking about something. <laughs> One of us will just be like, I know what happened to Burger. <laughs> To come see for Dickenberg. <laughs> so the story behind that, man, um, goes back to high school, man. Uh, we may be 15, 16, and we used to go on these church trips called conventions or whatever. And it basically be like all of the churches uh, from the nation meet up in a city somewhere. And, you know, I mean, they have like fellowships and meetings and stuff. And they have like little... Uh, like uh, basically like Bible school sessions and stuff for the teenagers and kids and all that shit. So, but basically what basically turning into is a bunch of, a bunch of people getting into debauchery for a week is basically turned into like a uh, religious freak Nick. Um, so back in high school, you know, we used to be basically just wilding. So one year we had the convention and it was in uh, Santa Clara, <laughs> California. And, the, se- the, the section of Santa Clara we were in is not very popping. It was very dry. It, it was like a business section. So it was really only two things to do every day. Um, it was either uh, basically like order pizza and walk around the hotels and holler at girls or go up the street to the girls' uh, hotel and hang with them. Or like go up and down and walk the strip and go to these different little food places. It was like little restaurants and stuff up and down this little street. So every day we was basically going to what was it? Was it Denny's face? Was it Denny's or IHOP or Denny. it was yeah, okay, it was Denny's. So uh it was like the only place that had like decent food on a day to basis that we knew like was gonna be pretty consistent. So we would go there every day. And one day we went, man. And it was this, uh, now mind you, we're 15 and 16. We wouldn't have, none of this would have happened had we been the age we are now and been understanding of stuff. But this is way back in like 90 something. So like, understand this context, people, before I get into the rest of this. <laughs> Please don't cancel us, okay? Just understand that like, this is the, the, the pre-woke <laughs> face and tears. So it was me, Face, and our homeboy, Chris, man. And we go to this place every day. So we one day, we up there at Dennis. We done order some burgers. 
burgers and fries or whatever, you know, at that age, I don't care where you go, burgers and fries or chicken tenders and fries is pretty much the standard order. Like, that's just what you're going to get. So um, we sitting there, we waiting on the food or whatever. We sitting there geeking, like, we loud as hell. We, you know what I mean? We laughing and joking and shit. Um, and it's this uh, indigenous brother that's <laughs> over there. And he... <laughs> <laughs> And he wiping the tables off. He like a uh, bus boy, I guess you call it. Whatever. Like he busting this the table. Nigga <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Yeah, so this indigenous brother was wiping the table down. He was busting the table. And um, so me and Chris sitting there, we looking at him like, and at this point, like, you know, we had, we, we done learned the white man's uh history. So, you know, that the only few, there's only a few indigenous names that are at all of stature that they teach you about. They teach you about like Cochise, Tecumseh, uh, and like what is it, sitting bull, sitting bull or something like that? Mm-hmm. But there's only like three or four people that they actually teach about, you know, uh Pocahontas and, and Squanto, you know what I mean? Tan. Like yeah, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll teach about everybody. So anyway, the dude wiping the tables down, he keep gritting on us, looking <laughs> at us bad as hell, right? <laughs> and he's just like, you can tell he annoyed, like, you damn kids over there. So we make up this whole story about this dude in our head, right? And his name is Tecumseh. And he over there talking shit about us, looking at us all bad, right? So we loud, now mind you, like we 15, 16. So we're much, to us, it's a private conversation. But to Dennis, it probably sounds like we are literally telling this joke to everybody. But we over there weak. Oh, Tecumseh. We done made up a voice for him and everything. Oh, those damn kids. Ugh. <laughs> committed year. All right, so we over here geeking, right? So anyway, food comes, burgers and fries come, right? So we, uh, you know how you prepare your food, you get your ketchup and stuff on there, you salt your pepper, you know what I mean? You seasoning the food up the way you like it or whatever, whatever, whatever. So we doing that, and I can't remember whose burger it was, but somebody had something wrong with their burger. It was like something weird with the burger or something, and it just didn't look right to them. <laughs> So I look over, and I'm just like, I know what happened to Burger. Tecumseh put dick in Burger. (laughs) (laughs) And we were, like, crying and laughing, bro. And for some reason, to this day, like, that shit would come out of nowhere. Like, to this day, if we were to see our old boy Chris, like, if we were to say that, he would probably, like, break down. Like, it's just one of them... Things that, like, no matter how old they get, it's, it's it shouldn't be this funny still to this day. But <laughs> God damn, to come to, I tell you, boy, some shit just lasts. Stand the test of time. Oh, shit, I'm like, want some bread. Shit, want some Yo, bread. Want some bread. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even know why that was. I don't. I, to this day, I don't know why that's funny. There's nothing about that that should be funny. Like, there's no punchline. There's no. Boom! Moment. It's just. It's just literally you asking me, "Do I want some bread?" As you hold a, a basket of bread. But why is that funny? And I sit there and spit Kool Aid out of my nose, mouth, and every other facial orifice at once. It just all sprayed down the table in the middle of like uh somebody anniversary banquet or something at church. It was some special moment for somebody, and I'm sitting there. To, <laughs> At the head table, <laughs> sneezing Kool Aid, because <laughs> this nigga Chris just kept saying, "You want some bread? Hey, you want? Hey, you want some bread? You want some bread? You want some bread?" I don't know why that was so funny. To me. The the dumb shit you laugh at, man. The dumb shit you laugh at. Period in life, because I was about to say when you when you're 15, but then I thought about it, man. That shit funny to me now, and I don't know why. <laughs> oh man, funny to me. Boy, this bitch crying, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, uh, Pod Squad. Now, if you ever out of the restaurant and, some, and somebody's looking at you like they' about to fuck your order up, if you get that said order and it don't look right, you know what happened. 
Tecumseh put the dick in. <laughs> well, back to the good and fuckery. <laughs> yes, back to the good and fuckery. <laughs> and we just had a forget we were in the good. <laughs> yes, we're still in the middle of the segment. That still happened, oh, folks. Man. That, that actually oh, happened, folks. Man. <laughs> See, sometimes you just got to let stuff breathe, man. You just got to go with it, man. Wherever it takes, man. Now y'all know something new about us that you didn't know before. And you know, you're going to get these little nuggets from oh, yeah. time to time because we've known each other that damn long. That's the funny part. You never know what happens on the good and fuckery. Oh, Could be just listening in on the entertainment news. And next thing you know, some indigenous man just put your di- put put his dick in your burger. I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I, I personally <laughs> just respect it. Some indigenous man put his dick in your burger. That's some fuckery to me, literally. Literally, uh, that's fuckery. That ain't no nobody. mayonnaise. Don't you eat that? <laughs> that is not no miracle whip. It ain't no damn mouth. <laughs> that ain't Martin no said. damn puppy. <laughs> yeah, Gina talking about something. Oh, that's a cute puppy. <laughs> I like your puppy. <laughs> that ain't no damn puppy. God dang. That nigga was hitting with punches like that. <laughs> Why was his wrist doing this? <laughs> the hell did you go hurt like that? <laughs> he just massaged that wear rat. That Caribbean wear rat. <clears throat> oh man. Oh, oh man. Oh, what, was yeah. the, what was the dude name that came on the live, yo? That was talking about uh Martin, yo. That was a good time. Oh, um, I'm in. Uh, yes, I'm in. Yeah. yeah, that was funny. It was good times. Oh, All right, man. My bad. Fuck Go me. ahead with the good and fuck with me, man. Oh, okay. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Good. Will Smith <laughs> is playing Venus and Serena's with um, Serena Williams' father. And um, what's the movie name? King Richard. Trying to remember what Venus, let me see what Venus and Serena's father look like. Okay. <coughs> go, go ahead, though. King Richard. Oh, that, that's pretty much you it. Said that, King Richard? Was the drink. Yeah, the name is King Richard. Oh, their, their father's name was uh, Richard. Oh, yeah, it was Richard Williams. I get it now. Let me see what this nigga look like. Yeah, I was just scrolling on Instagram. And then I can see that. Up. I can see that. He not as dark as that man, but like. There are some features. I, I can see him pulling that off. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, and then, you know, Will Smith is good at, you know, like he played Muhammad Ali. He played, uh, so I, don't know. I know he played somebody. Yeah. Played Muhammad Ali. I'll think of it later. But, shoot. I was scrolling on Instagram, and next thing you know, Will Smith Instagram popped up and he said some big speech about, you know, the the honor of acting is 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 playing something that's meaningful or something like that, whatever. And I'm like, who are you playing now? Man. First I thought he was what is it, Arthur Ash? No, he ain't actually playing. <laughs> Arthur <laughs> Ash. <laughs> that would yo, that would no, nah, he shouldn't play Arthur Ash. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Uh Damn, who could play off ass? Maybe Charles Ash Child like, Gambino should be off ass. Oh, that would be yeah. yeah, that would be dope. Yeah. Like Arthur Ash was like uh was like the Tiger Woods of the 80s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the tennis, <clears yeah. <clears <throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shout out to Virginia. We breed nothing but greatness. Greatness. Just what Bask in it. Bask in the Virginia. Nigga, did you just rub I, your nipples? No, nah, I went like this. I don't yeah, know what bro. to do with my hands. Oh, all right. I, it looked like you was like... It was far away, man. This, this. Shirt's here. Hands up here. Stop here. it. Okay? Tell a friend. you rubbing the imaginary titties. <laughs> God dang, Tiz talk about man cleavage the other, the other episode. Hey, man, I'm telling you, show your man cleavage to your woman. Watch what happens. <laughs> More relationship tips. 
from Tess. Yeah. <laughs> but the other thing I was going to say. Yes. Um, back to the good and fuckery again. Richard Williams. That's like two first names put together. Like Never trust a matter <laughs> with two first names. Richard Williams. Two Richard first Williams. name is Williams. Huh? V- Venus and Serena <laughs> Williams. Names. Yeah, there's like two first names. But William, you know, William could be uh, like the first Master, name. If, Master William. Yeah, like if somebody's <laughs> short for Will, Willie, uh, Bill. I don't know how William turns into Bill, but Willie that's Walker. Some- I ain't never figured that shit out. <clears throat> it's like I didn't figure out how Richard turned into Dick. <laughs> oh, you know what? I saw uh, it still didn't make no sense, but it was an actual history behind I that. Know how, I know how it happens, happens to constantly <sighs> put dick in Richard. <laughs> All throughout history. <clears throat> it's a long line to come say <laughs> 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 Yeah, they have to come. I'm to come say, and my ah! and my daddy before me was to come say, no, no, <laughs> and my grandfather no. before him no, was shut to come. Shut up, they come no. from a long side no. line of to come says. <laughs> I have to come say the the twenty second. It's like it's like the Phantom. No, the, he said. <laughs> Oh, like Black Panther. To come to Black Panther of his tribe. <laughs> and when he when he goes seek justice, he puts dick in. <laughs> in order for you to get the name to come say there's a fight that you have to go against all the cousins in your family. Whoever hey, wins comes say. Hey, look. You said all throughout history to come say been playing. <laughs> uh, this time on the good and fuckery episode 37. Uh, oh, oh, I had one cry. I laughed until the cries. Oh, my God. Oh, oh God, bro, yo, <laughs> yo, yo! I just realized this, yo. What has to be a good twenty-two years later, man? That nigga name was to come say. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Oh, uh, God, the revelations dude. of when you when you our grow show, older. Our show has definitely taken a turn for the worse, yo. <laughs> Subscriber we lost last week. I understand, yo. I get <laughs> but I've never had so much fun in my life. <laughs> Yo, that's funny. It was one gang five hundred. I can't believe that shit. That is hilarious. All right, go ahead with the good and fuckery, bro. All oh, right, <laughs> let's get it together right. at some point. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start the rumor. I'm gonna start the rumor. Okay, Uh-oh. the rumor is I think Jay Z is going to release something soon, like an album, like musically, album, maybe a track. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? We already seen, we already heard, well, some of y'all might have missed it, but that verse off of um, Kanye's album that he didn't drop, Donda, or whatever. So, um, but I say this because Nas is releasing King's Disease 2, August 6th. And King, anytime Nas... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What, what, what? Huh? King, King's for G's. King's Disease. King's for G's. King's disease. King's is disease. Like, okay. Yeah. King's, gotcha, gotcha. Di- uh, King's disease two. Okay. Because 
Last when, did year that, when did the first one come out? Okay, yeah, I was about to say, I don't remember the first La- Last year, last year. He got a Grammy for it. He beat Freddie Gibbs. Freddie Gibbs got pissed. And then, not really, but then he rapped over uh, one of Nas's beats. And it was a great song, actually. I like Freddie Gibbs. But yeah, King's Disease 2 is coming out uh, August 6th. And um, anytime Nas <coughs> drops, Jay-Z drops something. Mm. Every single time. Every what? single time. So, either way, Nas fans is happy. I, I won't be mad. Happy. As a Jay-Z fan, I definitely will not be upset at all. Come on with it. I'll take, mm-hmm. I'll take some good jig of music <coughs> right now. That'll work for me. Yeah. Come on, ho. Yeah. Feed the streets, bro. And uh, then uh, other news, Cardi B's Bodak Yellow makes YouTube history. The 2017 track is the fastest solo single by a female rapper to reach 1 billion views. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. That, that was kind of crazy. No, that's pretty impressive. And I'm going to top the good and fuckery off with a topic that you wanted to talk about, but you didn't uh, exactly get to it on the live. Okay. Um, I'm I'm on Team Royce. I like Royce okay. the 5'9". Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I like okay. Royce the 5'9". Okay. Now, it all started when Ransom and RJ Payne yes. Um, yes. said that they were the best ever. And I, um, as far as bar for bar rappers, RJ Payne and Ransom, I, I'm not going to lie. I've been on the low enjoying Ransom's random releases. I know a lot of people might not know, but Ransom, um, he was a rapper. In the DJ Clue days or whatever, he had a group named 18. It was another dude named Hitchcock. I think they uh, got into a disagreement. So Ransom is on his own. But Ransom is one of those spitters, man. Like every time I hear Ransom, I never heard like a Ransom verse, even back then in the 2000 days that I didn't like. Matter of fact, I listened to the 18 just for Ransom verses, matter of fact. So for you young kids that have no idea who Ransom is. Him and Joe Budden are the reason that now y'all have this internet pull up, let me record myself while I go pull up on my ops type vibe. Mm-hmm. Like they was pulling up on each other and people was getting smacked on front porches and all kinds of stuff on, on YouTube back when YouTube was still in its infancy and it was because of Ransom and them. DJ Vlad actually got his whole career off of following uh, Joe Budden and Ransom and their beef so yeah and that's, they, 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 they kind of like the like soldier Vlad, boy of the YouTube stuff <clears throat> and that's why Joe Button don't like Vlad now well he's probably part of it this is, all this is the it. other fuckery Vlad does but yeah yes. <clears throat> um yes. but yeah I I feel like every rapper, especially if you're a bar for bar, punchline spitting, you know, rapper that or, or whatever, should feel like they're the best rapper, period. But yeah. then Royce, Royce came in and he was like, he basically was like, to who? You know, and he was like, do y'all check all the boxes or whatever? So I don't know. Can you please tell me exactly what he means by that? I have my own thoughts about what he means, <clears throat> but he never explained what he means. So do you, is that a standard term or something I, that I know no, it's, it's not a standard term it's 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 some it's basically something he probably said on the fly to explain hey I did I got these amount of accolades or what I, when boxes I, does Royce <clears throat> check that's I'm still does. trying to figure that out what exact boxes does he check I know he asked that of everybody else but like if we talk about accolades, like I don't know that he's some um, acclaimed rapper I, I, like that. Get that. Like the the best term for it for it is because this this is all about underground, like rapidly rap hip hop. Right, that's what I'm saying. When you talking about so, that, was he even the best in his group? Um, it all depends. But like, it all depends when it comes to Slaughterhouse, it all depends on it. Cause I feel like at one point of time, each one of them will have a verse that might outshine the rest of them or whatever in Slaughterhouse. Like I was still, if he's not the I'm best. I'm talking about one, consistently, like. Consistently. 
Yeah, everybody can have a a, a moment where shit line up <laughs> right, and I have some a moment of greatness. I'm talking about like consistently. Was he the one that was like look to like, oh, you're gonna have the verse on this song most likely. Um, to me, he wasn't. But I'm trying to see like more like what the public perception might have been or what other. People I would say. Royce is, is one of those ones where I would feel like other rappers would feel some pressure. Like, um, not necessarily be afraid to be on a track with him, but they know that he's going to come with a certain amount of performance, so I'm going to come with a certain amount of performance. Because he has, I would say, <clears throat> he's gotten, his music has gotten better as far as topics and content over the past couple of years or whatever. Um, if As far as like staying on the beat or riding a beat or whatever, like I, I believe when he wants to, because there's some times where he wants to put in so many syllable bars at one time that I feel like it doesn't ride the beat like it should or whatever. But I'm not going to Is lie. that I, one of the boxes <laughs> that you should be checking though? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean... That's, what are these boxes? Let that's me the know. One thing. That's that's the one thing I need to figure out myself. I, it's yeah. not like he posted anything on Instagram and like put up a list that says, hey, these are the boxes. You know what I'm saying? To check it. If you're going <laughs> to come out here and you're going to start talking about boxes and all that and challenging people on them thinking that they the best and all that, then my thing is this. Prove yours. Don't yeah. keep talking shit. Rap, nigga. You would have been on, would have been on thirty-two thousand live streams, whining because these niggas jumping me, nigga. It's rap, rap, nigga. You the best mm -hmm. in rap, nigga. Mm -hmm. I do. Stop trying I do to say find it. help and rap, nigga. You had a chance to rap. You made a song. The shit did not go as go off as crazy as you thought it was gonna go. Niggas came back. Cause you were still talking shit on lives. These live streams are the problem. It's, it's these okay. just hang out on Instagram live and talk shit to each other until I think it gets get annoying. It makes the situation weird or whatever. Yeah, because now you put me on, on front street in front of everybody. Now I gotta talk bigger shit than I normally would, etc. But rap nigga, they challenge you on rap. Everybody done rapped at you. And and I don't care what you said. I ain't heard nothing that nobody said that was that damn disrespectful that we can't keep it rap. Mm -hmm. So don't start like he said, that's what pissed me off. He started talking like he wanted to, you know, I don't know how to take it. And you know, I, I usually like man, ain't nobody trying to fight you and all that, man. Them niggas rapping. Rap, nigga. Mm -hmm. Stop ducking the well, rap smoke and the rap fade. So out of the because it was three involved. Right. And I don't, I still to this day don't understand where, like, I probably got to look into the lives again to figure out where the Lupe fall into it or whatever in the oh, conversation. So but Lupe came in that, on one of the lives because uh, Royce was talking, they were talking about who was nice and all that or something. And somehow or another, Royce's name got mentioned on some stuff, but it won't on no crazy shit. It was just like, Awesome. I might not agree with somebody said about Russ. I mean, uh, what about somebody said about Lupe or whatever? So then uh -huh. Lupe came in with like a uh, with no shirt on, yelling and cursing and acting all crazy. Like you knew it was still you knew it was still about rap, but that was when the energy first shifted. And then uh -huh. what happened was the uh, there was a live with Mickey Fax and uh, Royce, and during uh -huh. that live. Royce kept asking Mickey, do you check boxes? Do you check boxes? And this was after, this was like the live where Mickey was kind of explaining to Royce that uh, Lupe won't know no, like, I'm trying to, like, no rah-rah shit like that. Like, it was, you know, <coughs> just rap or whatever. Uh -huh. like, so somewhere in that conversation <coughs> with Mickey and Royce, it started to get a little more weird because it started to sound like Royce was like downplaying Mickey's career and Mickey's abilities, right? Because uh -huh. he's asking, but do you check boxes? And, and everybody in the chat was like, well, what do you mean? Like what, uh -huh. check what boxes? Like Mickey, Mickey dope as hell. He wanted the best, like, he wanted them elite spitters. Like, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So 
<laughs> that ain't even no question. So anyway, it kept going, kept going. And basically uh, it got to the point where Royce told Mickey what rap did. Basically like telling him from what I, if when I'm watching it, which is why I think Mickey assumed the same thing. I got from that, oh, well, go make your go make your record then and show me that you check boxes. Uh -huh. Mickey did that, but Mickey from yeah, New did. York. And Mickey from the, the cloth of like, if we're gonna rap, then we're gonna have, we're gonna battle on wax. So Mickey battled on wax. <laughs> I don't see what he said, nothing crazy, disrespectful or nothing. He just he chewed your he just chewed your ass up lyrically, like. Nigga, Mickey went in on that shit. And I think Royce is just salty because <laughs> he know that if he go in there, he ain't going to make nothing that, that far. It ain't going to be that. I don't think... Um, I don't try to say. I don't think Royce, on the first one, took took stuff seriously. Because like that beat was too chill of a beat. And I feel like Royce is on some... I don't feel like Royce is on some battle tip. Pretty much, just in general, just making well, music or what? He better get it, <clears throat> but at the same time, kick his ass. So, well, I was gonna ask, which out of the three have you heard? Um, you heard Lupe's and Royce version, right? Also, right? Because I know you heard Mickey's. Yes. All right. So, which one did you like the best out of the three? Mick. Um, Mick. I think Lupe's wasn't <clears throat> as hard as Mickey's. Royce's wasn't really a battle record to me. It was more just like a rapidly rap record, but it wasn't like yeah. uh, I'm going at any kind of Um, I like Mickey's because it was direct. It was rapidly rap and the flows. It still was a good song. Like mm -hmm. it was good music as opposed to just I'm battling, but the song sucks. You know what I mean? Like I'm saying some hard shit, but Nobody don't nobody want to ride to this. Like I would bump that nigga <coughs> shit. I was rocking with that shit. You feel me? Um, mm -hmm. I will also say, Mickey has the line of the three songs for me. Which, yeah, I ain't heard another line like that in a minute. So I really fuck mm -hmm. with that. So that uh, what is it? It come the cliffhanger like like Cosby Closet. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That yeah. is fucking. It's right there. It's, it's right in front of yeah. everybody for, for 30 some <clears throat> years, 40 years, and nobody ever popped that out. That I love those type of bars. Like it's right there when you hear it. You're like, oh my God, how did nobody ever say that? But he said it. Oh no, I love it. I love those jokes. I love those bars. Well, Yo, that hey. one of those that God, the light bulb hit your head type bars. Yeah, that shit was hard. <clears throat> so, I also yeah, like the Mickey. I also like listening to songs that I've been listening to forever. And then I listen, and it's been a while since I listened to them. And then I listen to it again in my adult years and I catch yeah. something that I just didn't catch before. It, it hit a little different <clears throat> now that you've been through some stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think um, I have a Royce bias because I always liked Royce since like that scary movie song back in high school with him and Eminem, pretty much. I and I always like, like his bars or whatever. That so was the I like that got me into Eminem actually. True. Yep. And it was another one of them. Um, boom, with him and Premier. Uh, boom to you too. Boom. Guess who stepped in the room? That's uh, it's um, um, it's a Premier beat. And and Royce was on it. This was like the first time I heard Royce with his own song or whatever, because this was like early in his career. And he um what's that first verse he said? I, I'm the verbal I'm spit, atomically. Spit. <laughs> Not, that was inspector deck, man. <clears throat> what is that? Um uh, I'm the verbal spit Smith Wesson. I can come through with slick spit and quick wit, they'll split a split second. I never heard anybody say I split a split second. So from then on, I was like, all right, I'm kind of hooked. I, I don't know how your wit can split a split second though. That don't I don't get it. It's just the way you put it as far as the bar. See, you know? see, that's what I mean by Royce. Like you put all them syllables together for it not to make sense. Like, yeah, the rhymes, the rhyme pattern, the rhyme scheme, the uh the amount of syllables you pieced up is dope, but where's the meaning behind it? Like, I'd rather you do all of that and then at least say something at the end. Like at the end of that, I should come away with something that still makes sense. 
it's an entendre or whatever, but it still makes sense. Like entendre should make sense both ways, not just the one way you had to try to squeeze it in there for the punchline. But that's my opinion. You know, that's just how I be. You're not going to make me not like that bar anymore. I like that line. He said, split a split second. No, I you basic people. Man, you, you, you <laughs> love that line, bro. I'm, I'm not mad people. at you. And I'm like, oh, nobody else has ever said anything like I can split. Because that shit don't make sense. Up. What the fuck they going to say it for? Oh, man, I like I like, I like superhero like shit. shit. <laughs> I like I'm gonna, I'm going to split a split second. I'm sorry, Tiz, and what? this is where we're going to dif- differentiate. What does that mean? I don't. I, I this this is where we differentiate. I like when rappers say superhero shit. I I I get I get it that all right. We like music where we we learn. I love life songs. I love life songs where. You know, you relate to the song, but sometimes I just want to hear somebody say some crazy shit. That is like I, I that's I want to I want to see somebody say some crazy shit, some shit that sometimes I want somebody to say some unbelievable shit. Of course, I know that this guy can't punch somebody through a mountain, but see, maybe punching somebody through a mountain, I get that though. That's different. Mm-hmm. That's hyperbole. Mm-hmm. That's hyperbole. What does split a split second mean? That's what I, I don't can get. Do something like, impossible. I, I would probably have to talk. That's to not about impossible. It, it just me. don't matter. <laughs> Respect, man. <laughs> if we ain't gonna get it. We, you know, this is just one of the moments where, all right, we just not our taste. I don't get it. Not, you know it ain't saying? even about taste. I'm just trying to figure out what does that mean. <laughs> Maybe it makes sense if you hit it with the song or whatever. But anyway, well, I'll, let me go back to what we were talking about before we, we drift. Um, Lupe, I didn't enjoy so much, but I respect Lupe lyrically. But I just didn't enjoy that song too much. He sounded like he just got a little too emotional over it. And I don't know what they had gone through with their podcast or whatever, or how he felt with the podcast and whatnot, because I felt like that was that, a lot of that got going real. Into it. Yeah, because yeah, they ended the podcast. They totally, they totally Joe Rory mauled the podcast after that. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, that was cool. And I think I like Mickey's joke just because it wasn't no drama in it, and it was just all performance. I mean, he his impersonation of R.J. Payne was, I thought it was, R- I thought he got R.J. Payne on the track at first, pretty much. I, like. Agreed, agreed. When he was attempting to do Ransom, yeah, it just sounded like, to me, it didn't sound like an impersonation of Ransom. It just sounded like you just rap it to me. Right, or right, whatever. right, right. I right. feel like, I feel like, okay, you probably word for word written down or whatever and performance wise probably said it the same way but ransom voice is i think ransom voice is the um deal breaker on that like if anybody else rants ran um i can't even talk shit what am i trying to say if, if anybody, anybody does ransom's voice rhyme like ransom it's just going to sound like somebody rapping or whatever. I got but you. We rap, I got you. Rap, it's his rap voice it. that sells the that sells his yeah. bars more. Exactly. Exactly. I got you. And not necessarily his voice sells it, but it's like a cherry on top of what is already a good thing. You know what I'm saying? It's what like, gives it the, that final oomph. Yeah. Like that exactly. pizzazz. Like, oh, that's the yeah. it was good. Like you, that, that'll take a degree. Yeah, like a lot of times with rap, it, it's all the voice. Sometimes it's like what does if, matter because you like, sound like that dude that uh Gator Girl put us on to that time, the AR or whatever. That man, <laughs> I don't care what he said, that, that's not gonna go. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He's gonna win Grammy next year. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he gonna win the Grammy, next, the Grammy next year, man. Yeah, for a best comedy album, <clears throat> but yeah, I'll be winning one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like some it's some rappers that like I respect them like lyrically or whatever mm-hmm. when I just like listen to them, but I'm not always going to them first. 
Um, like, for example, Talib Kweli. I, I respect him. It's some songs that I actually like from him, but I can't listen to his voice all the time. I just can't. I, I can't listen to him all I the time. It's like, where you go, why you say that? It, it's like sometimes when I, if I want to hear somebody rap hard, I want to hear that anger in his voice. He don't sound like, even when he has anger not in his voice. Not enough aggression there for you. Yeah, it's not but, enough aggression to me. And it's too somebody would probably flip what I say and call it a diss. But yeah, niggas know what voices sound like. I get what you mean. <laughs> and I get what you, you mean. Know? It's like, I don't, don't want to hear somebody who always sound peaceable. Sometimes I want somebody yeah. who's by the, by the rage. And I think that's I think that's the effect that I have with Lupe. Now, my brother probably mm, mad at me. Mm-hmm. Lupe is like one of his favorite rappers too. But it's like, I don't know. I don't go to Lupe for aggression. Like I go that's to real. Lupe. And then and if I listen to him with aggression, it's like it it don't it don't the voice don't don't, don't have the conviction yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah. Like when you when you hear if you want to hear aggressive rap, you you want to be able to feel that shit to the point that, like, you would say that. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. Like, I, I feel like sometimes if 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 certain rappers write their aggressive rap and somebody else said it, you would you would like got it, it more. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, I feel and you. And that's not Some people are like better as ghostwriters, and, and they don't know it. Dude, I felt the same way about certain raps that Gilly, I made. <laughs> Gilly the Kid was like that. Like, when he did songs, it didn't go. But if he gave it to somebody else, mm-hmm. yeah, you got you on it. Yeah. 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 Man, I feel that. Mickey, Mickey Facts, he still did his thing, though. And Mickey, I, it's, I say, he's one of those people I don't expect a whack rhyme from. Yeah. Oh, oh. I, ain't, I ain't ever heard a whack rhyme from him. Mm-hmm. But, That's real. I think I think Royce's biggest I think Royce's um biggest fault or whatever flaw is that sometimes you got to do way too much work to get the bar. And then sometimes it's good to work to get the bar. Like like I said earlier, like you know, you listen to songs from a long time ago and you like you hear something, you know, like you didn't hear before or whatever. Right. But sometimes it's like all right, sometimes I just want to listen to music. I don't want to have to, like, examine every freaking bar. I just want that chunk to hit me. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, I don't need to pull out the encyclopedia <clears throat> for every song. Sometimes I just want to easy listening. Yeah. Some, just, I just, don't spoon, know. Just, just, just spoon feed me on this one. Don't make me work for it. Yeah, I don't want to know every piece of social media, uh, like, social event to just figure out the bar sometimes. So, I mean, sometimes I like that. If it, you know, and sometimes I don't. But, right. Hey. And this is me with a Royce bias, you know, no, I saying get that. that pretty much. That was one of the things that Mickey actually pointed out in his song, like, in Ray, mm. that, that Royce yeah, he said it's okay. a current events together and shit. Mm. Yeah, he did say that shit. But, hey, some people, it, 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 sometimes at the end of the day, you just got to be like, hey, that's that rapper style. And that yeah. rapper's been doing it for that long. It works for that rapper. That might not be your cup of tea. And growing up with music, I'm like, hmm, that's that's the way I listen to music now. Like, uh, this is my cup of tea right now. This is not your cup of tea right now. This is mm-hmm. your cup of tea right now. This is not my cup of tea right now. So. Right, right, right. But yeah, that's my rant on that. Face, <laughs> face you over there. <laughs> I'm just looking at him by his tea. Oh, okay. But your cup of tea and his cup of tea and what's not and what he is and I ain't got no cups of tea, so I mean, hey, it is what it is with me. That's right. You got a cup of tea, man. That's that 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 good outcast down south rap cup of tea. Oh no, that ain't a cup. That's a big old gallon of jug, man. That is a that's, that's down a, that's south. A jug, they got the gallon jug of sweet tea. Yeah, that's a <laughs> what is it? Uh, what's that thing? I can't think of nothing right now. What is the name of that chicken place? They, they always have like jug of teas up there. Hardy's? It, the Hardy's did too, but I don't Bo, Bo, Bojangles? Bojangles did too. Yep. Popeyes? 
Pretty much all of them got a gallon of tea. KFC. Every southern, yeah, I just needed every one. Every southern chicken place don't say you have gallon of tea. Yeah. Actually, a big jug of tea would be a good would hit right about now. Actually, now that I think. A good, <laughs> big jug of tea will hit about any time of the day or year, night, whatever. Like, tea just, <laughs> sweet tea just good as hell all the time. If it's made oh, right. Yeah, he's but yeah, yeah, he like, jug people can't fuck it up, though. Jug of tea. And that tea, Don't give me no that TB taste old. Yeah, yeah, and that sour taste to it, whatever. Oh, uh, sour! Like I don't like, know what kind of tea you drinking, but you need to get that back for real. That, yeah. That's no, nah, uh, like you, like it has like that bitter taste. That's yeah, what I'm that bitter taste. Bitter taste. Bitter taste. Bitter taste. Yeah. What'd you say for that? That that tea to be all the way at the end with the grinds in it. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, yeah. But people oh, nobody want no gritty tea. That diabetic <laughs> barely have sugar in the tea or whatever. No, I, I, I need the sweet tea where you like put a gallon of sugar, uh, 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 like the bag of sugar in the bottom of that big barrel. Then you pour the tea in while it's hot and you stir mm. in another bag of sugar as you pour the hot tea in. Mm-hmm. That's how you got to make it. I'm telling you, if you do it like that, it's going to be the perfect sweetness every single time. I know because I used to work at Waffle House and I used to make the best sweet tea. The, the whole night shift crew used to, like, that first rush, right when I'd be getting off, when y'all used to come scoop me up and we about to go to mm-hmm. a party and shit, mm-hmm. right then, that first rush of people that be coming in, boy, they used to be like, man, your damn tea be good as hell. <laughs> Niggas be mad as hell when that shit run out. <laughs> they fuck they fuck around get there like at, you know like one o'clock in the morning when that shit gone they be like damn it we didn't got that damn night shift tea i don't i don't understand people that don't like sweet tea man i don't understand <laughs> i don't understand Some people don't all. like tea at all Some yeah people don't like coffee at all i think it's just like certain flavors you know is our, our acquired tastes <laughs> my stomach don't like coffee i know that much <laughs> man, I'm telling you, and that's the thing. Like, I don't mind the taste. I actually appreciate it because it does actually, you know, the caffeine does actually work to wake me up or whatever. Holy love, God. But, but that shit, like, it wake up my bowels for the rest of the day. Like, I drink a, one cup in the morning at 8 a.m. and like, it's 8 p.m. <gasps> and, I'm, and I'm still, I'm still letting them fire. Like, you know, you know, God damn, man. Like, fart rockets just blowing off all night. Like, I gotta get gassy as hell. <laughs> I'm walk. I'm walking through the halls of my job, just letting them off. Toot toot. Oh, uh, beep beep. beep, beep. <laughs> I mean that shit. <laughs> then I'm back and forth to the bathroom all day. Stomach feeling funny. Then I start sweating and shit. This should be having me all like, like, uh, like when you drink a, a energy drink and it don't do right with your system and that shit have you like jittery a little bit. Like that should be oh, like that. I be getting all hot all drink. of a sudden and sweating and shit. Nah, Yo, five hour energy drink does that, and that that shit is the devil. I don't care what anybody say. Yeah, I'm pretty sure um, that shit is a, some rocket fuel or something. Yo, I don't know what it is, but I know if you got anxiety or nerve problems, do not drink five hour energy drink. It does not do good with your soul. That it does like, not. Shit like it'll that. wake you up. But man, I'm worried. I'm in in. Drinking that joint, be worried about stuff I don't even normally be worried about. Like all the time. Like, hope, nah, this, nah. hope this gum wrapper don't get me in trouble for littering. That stuff is the devil. You know how the, the extra, the extra healthy, I'm vegan people or whatever warn you about stuff pretty much. I'm 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 being one of those with five hour energy drink, man. There's nah. something about that. Uh Yo, the, the way people should be scared about vaccines is the way the way people are scared about Ooh, vaccines. No, the no, way they no. Be scared. I can't have that piece of candy. It, it, it that, that that has a chemical in it that kills butterflies in Guatemala. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you right now, y'all should be like that with five hour energy drink, cause oh, I'm messing that shit. I'm good on that. Yeah, that's so. But yeah, that's my rant on five hour energy drink. I don't mess with nothing that when you that it, it say cherry is the flavor, but when you taste it, it don't taste shit like cherries. It tastes like yeah, that's what it is. That shit tastes like. tastes like battery acid or something, or or, or like they make, medicine. 
like with a some that you drink some type of for recreation should not taste like medicine. They made that junk with the scarecrow's fear gas. That's what they made that stuff. <laughs> and said, I don't do nothing but make you all antsy. That's clever as hell, the like scarecrow's fear gas. Mm. I like that. <laughs> oh, no. That was pretty good there. All right. And that was a good and fuckery, y'all. <laughs> Woo! Good and fuckery. Um, I think we really ended that a long time ago, but yeah, because I ain't saying yeah yet. Uh, I'm gonna tell y'all guys. That's about Rob an hour. And a, that's about an hour and a half of our show, there, buddies. Um, <laughs> I did not expect that to go that that way, but all right. Um, into my next topic. Uh, Rattle Robble. Uh, <laughs> That's going to be the motto for tonight. Uh, so, yeah, man, I wanted to ask y'all and, and just get the conversation going on. Who do y'all, what decade, the 80s, 90s, 2000s, the arts, or, yeah, those four decades. Which one of those decades do y'all think had the best music? And when I say that, I mean, like, collectively, as in the major four buckets or genres of music combined. So the best rock, pop, hip-hop, and R&B combined. Um, if you got to combine all four of them. If you combine all the all, all the aspects of music, I mean, all the genres, genres of music, I should say, like, it makes it harder because... Um, not everyone like is good in the same decade. You feel me? So like the pop, uh, I feel like the more the eighties pop music and stuff like that, that's more classic. You feel me? Like you can put that eighties pop on and rock anytime. Where some pop now is just more um like blase and it's just out there to be out there real quick and the next week it ain't nothing. So but when it comes to rap 80s rap to me sucked ass. Mm. <laughs> so, no, you won't no, answer that. You won't answer that. Uh, come on, nah. uh, get down. Uh, uh, we got the brakes. Uh, uh, ha, ha. Yeah, nah, I can't get, get broken glass. Everywhere. Nigga, I know that. That's you won't answer that hip hop that make you lose your teeth? No, that's just hip hop pointing out shit. I can see that myself. Broken glass Blanket everywhere. Dishes, everywhere. Uh, need to vacuum the carpet because it's floor on the floor. It's, I, I can do that shit. I, mean, I don't like 80s rap. It was trash. It was put as it was in, it, rap was in its infancy. So, I ain't I mean, never heard nobody say that they're pointing out shit when they talk about 80s rap. That is hilarious. Because <laughs> everybody was afraid to say it. Everybody want to be like, oh, we got dirty dishes. That nigga said dirty dishes. <laughs> <laughs> it was the beginning, so you gotta expect it. Like that is mean? hilarious. Yo. Like, oh fuck. To me, <laughs> to me, rap was in its greatest, like in the transition from the nineties to the early two thousands. You feel me like um late nineties, more more like more late nineties, um uh where you had the transition of more different styles of hip hop coming out. You didn't just have that one hurrah in observational rap. You had gangster rap. You had the conscious rap. You had the different aspects and the different genres coming out. So rap was in its teenage years and it was it was blossoming. So I feel like the 90s and the early 2000s was the best time for rap. But as far as pop, the best time for pop and stuff like that was like the 80s, man. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, come on, Hall of Notes. I mean, come on now. I mean, it's classics from the 80s, man. It's like classic, classic. Man. Any song that you can take from Scarface is going to rock. True. I don't know what true. year you put that on, it's going to rock, man. But you take something like a Katy Perry song from three years ago and you who like, who the fuck is, who the fuck is this shit? I don't want to hear this shit. I don't know, man. Fireworks yeah, go it, all, yo. Same aspect. Say, Gotta I, dim I, I, the lights, the lights the Cause baby, you're the fire. Oh, 
No, no, that ain't y'all shit. You not compared to Katy Perry to no 80s pop. Katy Perry get buried in the 80s. Betty, um, y'all but, but then, are we talking about country music too? No. No. I, uh, okay. <laughs> Okay. I, I don't even know I mean, a lot I'm of not, country I'm music not, from certain I'm not versed enough. Don't, yeah, yeah, I don't even know. That's why I kept it the shit that I was like, okay, these are the basic genres that all three of us would kind of have an pop, idea about. Pop, R&B, soul, and stuff like that. I'm going 70s, 80s, maybe. That's when everybody had, like, real feeling in it. I mean, like, we really had emotion. We really had, like, people were talking about something with substance, and it was just coming from a place of joy. <laughs> You feel me, like with the pop and stuff and the soul, like the, the the soul music really touched your soul. You feel me, like I can go put a seventies track on there, and I don't care what age you are, you can be in your teens and that seventies music hit you. You sit there and listen to it, you go, oh shit, OG on some real stuff right there, ain't he? But <clears throat> to the same instance, I can put a, a R and B song on from like three four years ago, and I'm like, man, this shit is all you talking about is sticking it in. I mean, it ain't no soul in this, like. I can I can make some song about sticking it in. Come here, girl, let me stick it in to the beat. <laughs> <laughs> Come and, here, and, girl, and let me stick it in. What the nigga? What? <laughs> Nothing but the hits from the to the beat. Yo, to the beat. Shit. <laughs> Come on, girl, let me stick it in. I got a deal. Come on, man, like. Like, but that also comes with the age of uh, of the music because I mean, like pop, it it, it won't in its baby years in the early seventies and eighties, like rap was. So rap had to mature and get to that place where it could blossom and first flourish and get to that that real goodness of it. You feel me? Like in, the way it was in the early nineties and mid two thousands, where the in the 70s and 80s the other forms of music had already blossomed they'd already been there so they were already in there in their groove where people can find how to just get in that type of music and find a niche where rap you were just trying to make it then and to be a mm-hmm. rapper you just trying to make it off what the next man did it will no on set niches and on set grooves where now you got your conscious rap you got your mumble rap you got your weird ass rappers who rap about just whatever you got that's me. Rap, I'm you joking. Got Belgian rap. You got you got every different sector of rap now. So rap has grown. So I can, I don't think I can answer that question as far as and just put all four of them into one one decade. Like yeah, this is the decade. All four of them because rap is so new. It didn't fall in with nothing else. So I got you. Okay, Pat, you want to take a stab at it before I get into it? Um, I would, I agree. I agree with Faith mostly. Like my favorite, 90s was like my favorite. 90s is what got me into rap or whatever. I was like, shoot, the first, and this is just because I had an older sister, I ain't have an older brother, but the first rap song I ever heard was Push It from Salt and Pepper. That's like the first rap <laughs> song that I can remember. That was like for real. That's like the first rap song, and that's because my older sister was playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, don't, like, I don't even know why that's so funny, bro. So please understand. Like I have no idea why that's funny. It's just I'm just imagining like a, a four year old Padawan in the crib. But pussy real good. The beat you like get up on this. Like, that's one of the greatest. 80s beats. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was so great. Cameron redid it. Like, come on. It was great. But he did redo it. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. I forgot all about that song. Okay. Yep. He showed up there. Yeah. That happened. Yep. Yep. That was and a thing that happened, y'all. That was a thing that happened. Uh, a lot of things with Cameron is a thing that happened. And it's big, hilarious. Big, big things are going with him. But I think my favorite era of music would be the 80s but not because of rap but more like that Sade um, it was like a jazzy spacey feel like Denzel um, what's his name? Wankster. I know it's I, I'm going to look this up man but it's or whatever it's one of my favorite like producers from the 80s or whatever 
And I think, and like, as far as musically, 70s, 70s music is probably the all time best music ever because every piece of music that is out right now is basically based off 70s and 80s music. Especially things from the 90s, like, like, there's still elements that they learned off of the 80s and 70s music that they bring in. It might be new technology, it might be new sounds or whatever. I will say that's the my the best thing about new music in the new era is just the sounds right now. Like the sounds are just like great. I wish I could we could take the sounds from this era and give it back to the artists in the 80s and see what crazy shit they come out with. But like um at a at a bass level, if of uh, me just pressing play and hearing what I want to hear that sounds good to me or whatever, mm-hmm. I think that that eighties uh, jazzy spacey sound, shoddy chill sound is is where is that for me as far as music? Like I can listen to that all day. Oh, that's that's Nate. His name is Dexter Wan- Wansale, and he got this um. He got this like, like a lot of people sampled from him or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. uh, like as far as rappers and stuff like that. But he got this like type of music is whatever. That's like it's, it's like jazz, but it it's a bunch of spacey sounding sounds. Like it's like um, oh or whatever. Like it's funk music or whatever. But uh, like it, it's is that. And then you have like Parliament. Like this still they're still remixing songs from the 80s and, and 70s and turning it, turning it into whatever twerk version. I know City Girls got some, what well, was uh, the Twerkalator song or whatever. They, yes. yes. And they basically took beats from the 80s and 70s. So it's got to be one of the greatest eras if they keep taking from it now. And I mean, now they're dabbling into the 90s era R&B and sampling and that too. And I'm not going to lie, that's like, as far as R and B go, just regular R and B go, I think '90s kills it with. As far as R and B, that's when R and B shined the most, pretty mm. much. Like to me, that just make as far as like if you if you go to like any party and they just playing like R and B or whatever, majority of that is coming from the '90s and a little bit at the end of the '80s. With key sweat and everything too, they might start off with Sir that. Rock, come on! <laughs> I did that just so I could get face to do that. Yo. He be sounded just like Bobby in the background. We got some pity coming. It's hard. It just come out of nowhere. Man, he he did that. I love it. I love it. <laughs> He, he did that like yeah let me let let me remind people I'm in the background <laughs> Bobby's still here y'all <laughs> but I will say the most fun the most fun I've gotten out of music is the early 2000s because that's that's the 2000 that's the era where we did all our crazy shit together pretty much so I'm I, I still matter of fact I still remember um, playing Undertaker, the the Ti song, and then and Chewy come along, make the hook tone, and then y'all start rapping, and then I, whenever I get a chance, I rap at the end, pretty much. So this is one of those two thousands is just one of those moments where like I got a lot of memories, crazy memories with that music. So that's still gonna be a place in my heart, pretty much. But if I'm sitting by myself. And I'm just chilling and I want to go to another planet. I'm probably listening to like 80s shot eight, pretty much. Okay. Um, I think for me it's definitely the 2000s. Um from 2000 to 2010. Um, I feel like on the R and B tip, it was still the era of People still make it. You still had choices in R&B. You had fucking music, but you also had love songs as well. 
Mm -hmm. Um, it hadn't all the way switched to we just talking about fucking. It was still kind of some of that old era still. Um, mm -hmm. it also gave us some of some of my favorite R&B artists like Neo and them. Like you know, what I mean, like for me, those I I really rock with their music. Like Usher kind of hit his groove around that time. Confessions and mm -hmm. stuff started to come out. Like so, we had like just some big time R&B in that point. We also that was got. Right. We also got rock taking it to a new level when it come to stuff like Linkin Park and um, uh, even Limp Biscuit when they first came out, that fusion of like hip hop and rock started to happen in that time. And I'm a big fan of that. Um, even bands like Creed and shit, like I think that that style of rock started the power ballads type thing started making a comeback and i really like that type of rock so i'm a big fan um and then with hip hop you had like it was you had so many different genres all flowing at once you had the crunk movement starting you had the snap movement during this time you had the rock star movement during this time you had the uh, oh, didn't like rock. right. Didn't you had rock. uh 50 Cent making his impact on the game. You had Kanye come Kanye coming into his own during this time. Like so the much mixtape era. Right. So much mm -hmm. that like we now look at as like our classic hip hop moments was happening during that 2000 to 2010 period. So like I feel like out of all four genres. It's like the time where like there's no time where like all of them were equally as great, but I would say like the closest time we got for me is like them 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 2000 to 2010, that decade. <clears throat> like I feel like every genre was just doing something really cool at the same time. But yeah. I I can't I can't lie. The 2000 era was one of the greatest times of my life. I ain't even gonna lie. Man, it was pretty. It was pretty special. At but even time, just from a musical standpoint, it was pretty special. And it was the perfect time for me to start growing my dreads because Wayne was on a rampage, and he had that one song, "Lollipop." And every time we go to the club, guess who gets uh, attention? All the single ladies. All the single ladies. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, face must be must be that took a break. He he used to be right there on that one. Oh. <laughs> but <clears throat> y'all want to see that, some amazing that, stuff. If y'all were ever around us uh, at a club and the right song comes on, and for some reason Tiz wanted to dance battle someone, it is the most epic shit. I don't know if you re remember that. Uh, was it Club Mystiques? It looked like an old golden corral, but we went in there. It was always a group. But some somehow, some way, you ended up dance battling somebody. Yep. It was amazing. Yep. <clears throat> it 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 happened a lot. It it did happen a whole lot. And I, I, I realized was somebody. I was really big into that back then. Yeah. <clears throat> Even when people didn't even want a dance battle. I, I battled mm -hmm. people that didn't even know that they were in a dance <laughs> battle. They were just enjoying themselves at the club with their friends. And I'm sitting there battling the fuck out people. Motherfucker, you gonna eat your head and then spit it out. Then I'm gonna shit it. And then I'm gonna kick it over here. And yeah, it was it was crazy. Oh, that shit move was hilarious. If they had <laughs> had like if they had had like a true life of like uh I'm addicted to battling, <laughs> that would have been me. I can't stop battling people. I just keep walking up to them, break door, break dance moves and shit. Yeah, it was bad. But on the other hand, yeah, it, did, it. It, it did contribute to a lot of us getting the right type of attention back then from the ladies. I'm just saying. I did, I did spark off some groups of girls that wanted to come over just because I was over there, you know, eating and shitting somebody's head out at the moment. Next thing you know, everybody going home with a little poo-poo. Little poo knot. <laughs> <laughs> little poo-poo, you know, little poo-poo. Little poo-poo platter. You know. 
I might have been pop locking it. I was fucking a lot back then. <laughs> Doing a uh, dance mating call. <laughs> I recall some of my dance battles having you end up on the floor with girls, uh, Pat. Yeah, that happened. That happened. You no, know, yeah. Lil Wayne made a song called Lollipop, and it changed my life personally. <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie. <clears throat> when, when, lie. When, when locks meet opportunity. Yes, less. And I'm not <laughs> ugly, so it works. You know what I'm saying? Like it might have been other dread dudes, but I'm not ugly. Those other ones were a little harsh in the face. Well, every guy is harsh in the face to me, yeah. but I, I'm by comparison. You know what I'm saying? I got my mom's looks. <laughs> <laughs> I got my mom's looks. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny for reasons I'm not quite sure, but I, I don't I know why it. either, but it's hilarious. Yes. Yes, I got my mom's looks. <laughs> my mom's gorgeous, so I don't care what it is. I ain't mad at you, Playboy. <laughs> Salute to the queen. But yeah, man, Pod Squad, y'all tell us who y'all favorite, uh, what y'all favorite decade is or what y'all think the best decade for music was. And when I say music, again, not your favorite genre of music, but objectively, kind of just like out of all of the decades and all of the genres, like the best mu decade for music overall. Um, what y'all think? Let us know down in the comments below. And yeah, mm -hmm. man. Face, what you got? So, this week, I figured I'd go a little old school Ooh. from when before we started, you know, recording. We used to play a little game on the old, we used to talk and shit over the phone. Can you please yeah, explain that? Around. Can you please say that one more okay. time? <laughs> Pause all that. We, <laughs> we, we didn't play no games, y'all. I figured I'd bring it back a little old school segment. From before we before we even started recording, um, before we started recording, as we all know, we just started getting up and come, conversing every week on a little just have a, everybody just meeting up, three or four of us. And back then, I used to um, bring a game to the table, a little oh, game that I would like called oh, "Would You Rather." Jesus, this is like the Russian it. roulette. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, so I'm definitely going to edit in the face disclaimer before this uh, part when uh, we release the uh, episode. <laughs> Audio people, you know, y'all get y'all get all the raunchy shit because uh, standards and practices ain't as bad on uh, Spotify and Apple. But uh, YouTube, uh, <laughs> when y'all see the face disclaimer, yeah, y'all yeah, know what to do. Yeah. So... Number one, I figured I'd bring it back from another uh, other old school question. I believe it's one of the first ones I've ever asked y'all. So I'm going to just bring it to the podcast this time. Number one, would you rather be stranded in the middle of the ocean with no supplies or stranded in the middle of the desert with no supplies? Desert. Yeah, I'm thinking desert too. Yeah, wow. because because the ocean is way scarier. Mm. Like, like the ocean. <laughs> all right, you're a land creature, so you're in the ocean. You're in the middle of the ocean. You really can't do nothing. You're at a handicap, and everything that could possibly eat you can maneuver and with ease all around you. You don't have no way of defense unless you strong enough to fight a shark <laughs> and swim. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if you're stranded in the middle of the ocean, it's like you're falling. Like, it's almost like similar to just falling in the middle of the sky. You know what I'm saying? You're just waiting for something to pick you off. Mm -hmm. It ain't gonna be nothing but a God and miracle if you actually get saved. You know what I'm saying? Least, at least I'm on land if I'm in the desert. You know what I'm saying? I'm black. I got skin. Maybe, hopefully, the pigment will... I'm black. I got skin. <laughs> yeah, I got... As I got, if you're something else, you know. Like, you walk yeah, around I'm, with your muscles wrong. out. <laughs> got your muscles all I, out. I got, I got heat-resistant skin. That's what I mean, mean to say. Hopefully, it's not as... It's not as weak as 
how I'm thinking it is. Right. Compared to Africa heat or whatever. Hopefully I eventually evolve. Hopefully I can actually find a place uh, of, of civilization or whatever, but I have more chance of finding civilization somewhere where I can actually maneuver and walk around on than in the middle of the freaking ocean. Unless Atlantis right. exists or whatever, or it's some miscellaneous random oil um, factory in the middle of the ocean and right. have those out there. I'm, sh- I'm shit out of luck. I can't really swim like that. Shark gonna look at me like snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Desert because I'm gonna say desert too. Um, middle of the ocean without no tools, you really can't catch nothing, kill nothing. You feel me? In the middle of the desert, I can grab something and bang it against the ground a couple of times and kill some a worm or a lizard or something. But you're in the middle of the ocean with no supplies, like you say, like everything out in the ocean can maneuver around you in order for you to try to get something. You either gotta put your hand in there or get in the water, and at that time, you put yourself at more risk to be prey instead of predator. On land mm-hmm. in the desert, I mean, it's fair. It's fair game. I mean, like if I can get my hands on you, I could possibly kill you because we all on the ground. Like it, it is what it is. It's just more for a land animal that which we are. It's just it'll be easier on the desert. So I believe there's three deserts for all three of us. Mm-hmm. Shoot, even if you're on a boat, you know what I'm saying? Even, Absolutely even, desert. Yeah, even yeah, when you're on a boat, way. man, you still you still screwed up. That boat don't got yeah. gas. Yeah, and I'm also thinking about like the ba- the most basic of human needs, water. If you mm-hmm. on a boat in the middle of the ocean, it's like the fact that he says ocean is very key to me because that means you ain't got shit around you but salt water, and you can't drink that. If I'm mm-hmm. in the desert, I might be able to find like a little underground spring, or you know. Get, you know, find some water type of plant, some type of desert plant that I can extract some water hey, from. Right. You know what I mean? Or maybe even find a desert river as I'm walking through the desert. You never know. Mm-hmm. But what I'm not going to find is no drinkable water in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. You're going to end up like um, a shark tooth in my ass. Like old dude in Waterworld. Y'all remember that movie? Didn't he have oh, gills? Yeah. Yeah, he had gills or whatever. But you also had this contraption that he had that turned piss into drink water. And, um, drink water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you want to do something like that and drink your piss, then you know you go ahead. But I ain't finna. Do, I ain't really. I'm no looking for options. I prefer where I ain't got not to drink piss. piss. Yeah, I'd, re- I'd rather not, not even my own. I, ain't got to. I don't want to drink no damn piss. I'm good on that. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, listen, I feel like I think I go a little silly with the next one. Oh, bro. Would you rather your significant other have an extra nipple or no nipples at all? An extra nipple. I like sucking on my wife's nipples. Where is the nipple located? It's actually very enjoyable for me. So yeah, an extra nipple. You said where is it located on a pedestrian <laughs> filler her forehead like a like a titty unicorn and I'm a how about that shit? I love that. That's the key. Come here, I need man. to know that's where it's key. located. Like if it's right beside the other one, okay, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But what if it's in the middle of her head nipples. though, and her head look like oh, a baby bottle? You mean to tell me you won't go ahead and uh, feed on your woman's put it in on your weird woman's place. head? I don't know, let's man. Put the nipple on the bottom of your chin. I'm going, I'm going to holler at my wife on that, man. Hey, look, man, my wife can put the nipple anywhere, man. I'm getting my wife nipple, man. I, I love my wife like that. And I love her nipples like that. So I'm good. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and roll with that. What about you? Uh, Big extra uh, nipple energy. Depends on where the nipple is at. <laughs> The nipple should be in your damn face or in your mouth. Well, I, I prefer I prefer female <laughs> nipples in my face. That's that's what I prefer. <laughs> Can't always get what you want. I like nipples on all of us. 
All right. Now, this one's more real, a real world one. All right. Would you rather have no money at all but be emotionally and spiritually happy or be wealthy and be forever searching for true happiness? Okay, say that one more time. Would you rather be broke with no money at all, but at the same time emotionally and spiritually happy, or wealthy and forever be searching for true happiness? Okay, so be broke but always happy, or wealthy but always looking for happiness. Um, I'm probably going to go with broke and always happy because yeah, like if I'm always happy, I'm not going to care. I'm not. If I'm always happy, shoot, that means I die happy. Man, I, I, I think I'm going to go with that. So being wealthy or whatever and always searching for happiness, that means you did all those achievements for nothing. Whatever, you might go into a depression doing that, man. I, I, Big yeah. Yeah, I, I like I prefer being happy over anything. Mental health. <laughs> yeah, I'd say be uh be broke and be happy still. Um can y'all hear that train? I heard it for a second and then it went away. Okay, great. Uh but anyway, yeah, I'd rather be uh broke but still happy just because I know what that feels like. Like I know what it feels like to be in an apartment with six, seven niggas all living there at the same time. Um, niggas sleeping on the floor and shit, and everybody been happy as hell. Niggas sharing packs of noodles and all kinds of shit, and niggas been happy as hell, smiling every day, like never having a care in the world. So I know what that feels like. I don't know what it feels like to be constantly unhappy like that, and I don't want to feel that. That sounds horrible. Mm-hmm. Defeats the purpose of getting Plus, wealthy. Yeah, I'm like, if I'm wealthy, I want to be happy and enjoy it. I don't want to be all sad <laughs> and still miserable and depressed and shit. Uh, but I'm sure there's some people that would probably take the latter. Right. Okay, okay. Because people will say, well, I could pay for counseling and try to help me find my happiness that way, or I can do this and this and this and this, and my money can find my happiness. So as long as I got money, I ain't never going to be unhappy. Or, there's always something. Mm, but yeah. the next one. Now, I robbed Kevin Hart for half of this idea. The other half is mine. Would you rather have a partner with no knees or a partner with no elbows? When you say partner, you don't mean like partner. You mean like your wife. Why, your sexual partner, your wife or your a significant other. Would you rather your wife or your significant other have no knees or no elbows? Oof. Oof. Yeah, uh, yeah she, she can have no elbows for me. <laughs> yeah, because I'm... Off, yeah, yeah. Get yeah, arms straight off at you, beating you up and down with no, no giving. <laughs> mm, she, she, I, she, yeah, I'm, go, I'm cool with the arms being straight up and down with no bending it because... Our favorite position is doggy style, so she can bend over still. She can still cock a leg up. She can still, you know, do some tricks with the with the knees. She ain't got no she ain't got no knees though. That means it's like constantly either standing straight up or like when <laughs> she laying down for missionary, her legs like always straight as hell. That's gonna be weird as fuck. Yeah, y'all know how I am about knees. So like I'm yeah. moving two by fours around. Hell no. Pet little fucking knees. <laughs> Yo. That would be a weird sight either way, though. Can you imagine just looking at an arm or a leg with no knees there or no elbow there? Just no joint. It's just straight, straight bass up the forearm. I mean, Fun built fact. like one of them tipping Babies birds. Babies have no knees when they're born. This is true. Built like one of them tipping birds. You know those tipping birds that always, like, duck down and sip the water? Right. Got this. Yes. And that's how they got to be in perp like, <clears throat> perpendicular as hell. Mm-hmm. They always all, doing Chinese it's, it's, bows. It's all 90 degree mm -hmm. angle. My last would you rather for this week. Now, are you guys familiar with Igor, like the dude from Notre Dame? Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Would you rather have two Igor humps on the back on on your back for the rest of your life or have the elephant <laughs> of the testicles? 
Well, seeing as though I don't really like looking like a drama dairy, but I also, uh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can I ask a question? Yes. Am I allowed to get surgery in either case? No. Nope. Did it for the rest of your life. Okay. Uh, definitely going to go with the humps. Uh, I can't even imagine what it's like to try to walk with no swollen balls like that. Like, I'm good. I, I, that don't fit. None about that. Sound, that sounds like it's going to ruin my sex life. I'm not going to be able to do nothing. It's just, no, nah, I'm good. I'd rather have the humps in my back and still be able to get it in. Yeah, hey, ego is still get. Oh, was able to get hey, yo, but I, <laughs> man, look, my face, my face card still gonna carry some, man. I can catfish somebody in the, in the coming, but uh, I got them elephantitis when they get there, I ain't gonna be able to do nothing. So, uh, I, I'd rather at least be able to seal the deal at least in my life. And I'm thinking about my wife. My wife is still, my wife is still, you know, balance me on my humps and, and, and get a ride on. I don't know that she's going to be able to ride if I got them big balls down there. She can't even sit down. Nah, bro. She go, you know, you can't, you can't even get no, you can't even get no more fallacious activity because now, you know, it's it's too, it's basically two big titties down there busting her in the face every time she go in and knocking the fuck out of her cheek. It's like, hell no. Nah. I was going to ruin a whole lot. Like, how? Put your ball on the bed. Think about it. Can I wear pants? If you get them dromedary looking humps, you can then walk around and you can play just the beginning of a Lil John song and just be like, put a hump in your back. Hey, hey, put a hump in your back. Hey, hey. <laughs> Put a hump in your back. Hey, hey. I think I'll go with the hump too, because I, I just I don't know. I don't like stuff chafing me. And I feel like elephant types is gonna have a whole lot of stuff chase chafing my shit. I mean, I'm I'm gonna just say a hump because I you can't wear pants no more. You what the fuck you gonna wear with your balls that big? Wearing dashikis and moo moos. Fuck! I gotta wear a shirt for this shirt for the rest of my fucking life. What? I'm a free baller forever? No, nah, give me one. Huh? Shit! I could tell. I can make that fashionable. Fuck! If Don Yee can make niggas wear homeless clothes, if Don Yee can make niggas want to be homeless and wear homeless clothes, I can make niggas want to be have humps. I'll move to California and start my porn career. That's the only way. This nigga said, I don't want nothing chasing me. You can wear dashikis and moo moos. <laughs> oh my God. That's all you could wear. And that, was, and that was my Would You Rather first installment on the podcast. More to come. More to come. I'm done, yo. I'm done. Somebody start the outro to the show, yo. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> He said, I don't like nothing chafing me. You can wear dashikis and moo moos. Nigga, no. Yeah. I picked the oh, hump, man. I, I, I picked the hump. I was just saying, if I had to deal with that, uh, that's what it would be. Hey, hey. Oh, man. Mm. Yeah, either way, it'd be difficult to live, man. I'm sorry. Shit, two humps in your back or a big ass ball. How would you oh, walk? Can't, you either can't sit or can't lay down. Either way, you're uncomfortable. Would you have you to walk around down. yourself? Like, like how can that people stomp out and walk around? Coming. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll, I, like I can't little, sleep on like my... I can't sleep on my... A little, wheel, little wheelchair for your ball. You can get one of them little mini wheelchairs for your ball and just push that shit, I guess. Man, you can't be I'm, walking around looking like you got a damn stroller for your nut. <laughs> they called me wheelbarrow, man. <laughs> like, hell no, bro. Nigga, you know what like, think about that, man. You walk around Walmart, man. <laughs> Mommy, what's that? Oh, so oh, that's sad. my balls and my mark cart. <laughs> like, you walk around scaring the hell out of little kids with these two big nuts in a cart. But, but put it this way. If you ever had to yeah. say... Oh, and then you know I what got. the next step is? Any nigga that got that shit, they're going to they gonna be trying to, you know, trick it out. So then it's going to be a competition to see who got the coolest fucking motorized cart. 
to roll to ride your balls around in. <laughs> have rims and shit on it my and all balls that. Balls on dubs, nigga. Nigga, my balls nigga, is on dubs. Nigga gonna have, have systems on they on they cart so they can have a little theme music for their balls. Nigga, you see my cubic head iced out, nigga. Fuck. Most mature <laughs> podcast in the in the universe. <laughs> hey yo, I'm, man, I didn't start this this time. This is not my doing this time. This phase. Yeah. Yo, if I mean if you it's have it, you know, you yeah. could literally say all I got is my balls and my word. And hey, shut up. Me. Okay. You know what? Good people, um, we ain't got no black business this week. We ain't, we ain't got nothing, man. Um yeah, man. Um, episode thirty-seven, man. I don't know what I'm gonna name this one yet, but uh, it's gonna be named something. So God my bless you for my word. This. Oh my God. Um, this is this is. Just wait till it pop out. Thank y'all. Big back and with big balls. balls. We love y'all. There you go. Big back and big all back and balls. I have no. Big back and balls. Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> At oh, T-H-G-P-O-D-N-A-S on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. I'm glad we set our goal for our first year so low at only 100 <laughs> subscribers. We definitely going to end up back at 250 subscribers. Exactly. Big balls. Um, but love y'all. Um, thank y'all, Pod Squad, who's still sticking with us. Uh, hope y'all had. Hope y'all enjoyed well, the show. Would you rather come in next week? Rather you like something, so go ahead and you know, like, comment, subscribe. Please make sure if you oh, heard any conversation tonight that you know what I'm saying you had a thought on whether you agree, disagree, or just thought it was crazy. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Feel free to leave your comments so we can continue the conversation with you. And uh, as always, we appreciate you. If you want to check us out or you want to you know give to us financially to support the cause, um, you can always support by giving us a cash app at dollar sign pod the tiz one that's p o d n a t i z one um or you can always go to buymeacoffee.com where you can donate as little as one dollar or you can sign up for a membership there and you can get access to behind the scenes content unedited shows you get access to our discord where you can communicate with us privately um you'll get members only content and um members only events with us you get special deals on the merch special promo codes where you get super discounts on the merch um and yeah you just get a lot more access you get to pick our show topics all kinds of stuff so you know what i mean feel free to join up as a membership on there and if you don't want to go there you can always go to patreon and also get the same type of membership perks there as well as well on patreon um, depending on which tier you get um, you can also get monthly or yearly um, free merch drops where you just get random partners gear and stuff for free. So, yeah, um, those are the ways you can financially support us. But if they want to financially support us, but they want something tangible for their time, they want something to actually put in their hands, wear on their back, put on their phone, drink out of in the morning, face, tell them how they can get the merch. For well, this one week remaining, for this one week remaining, you can go to teespring.com backslash stores backslash partners, P O D N A S dash closet. Not going to spell it for you. That's the number one. After this week, we'll be going to a new database, new platform, new store. Both stores will be combined into one. New and store. We'll be naming this one Our Trade Clothing. Our Trade Clothing.com coming soon. Our Trade Clothing.com coming soon. A R T R E clothing.com coming soon. When it's out, I'll let y'all know with two promo codes. But for right now, still go to teespring.com backslash stores backslash partner dash closet dash one. Already, already. So you got it there first. Pat, if they want to get in contact with us and they don't want to leave a comment, they want to actually continue the conversation on their favorite social media platform. How can they do that? If you just hit that at sign and then beside the at sign, you put T H E P O D N A S. And um, you can put it right there on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. You will find us there. Twitter also. Um, that's at T H E P O D N A S. And uh, yeah, yeah, hit us up, man. Uh, we also do a live. Uh, you didn't ask us, but so if y'all have any crazy videos y'all want us to uh, react to, Send us to either one of our social media platforms. That's at T H E P O D N A S on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Who I said that all professional.
you did sound super cool right there. Um, but yeah, man, that's pretty much all of the information. Um, and if y'all want to just, you know, continue the conversation, please, 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 on whatever you're listening to, just jump in and give us a comment. Make sure you leave a like. You know, we call that wiping your feet when you enter the building. And um, yeah, man, podcast coming out Wednesday night as always. We will have video clips dropping throughout the week. Live show back on as scheduled. We back on to the normal schedule of things, guys. So we back. Thanks, y'all. We love y'all. Keep fucking with us because we fuck with y'all. As always, I'm one third of the partners, your boy Tiz, and I was along with the other third of the partners about to roll up and watch this trailer um dipset versus the locks. Dipset, dipset. And, uh, um, I'm along with the other third dramatic pause. It's facing the place, leaving y'all with one big rival rival. Rattle, rabble. <laughs> awesome. Love y'all, man. We out of here. Peace.